today's uh, video we will talk about uh, an important concept in computer science which is recursion and we will slowly approach this by looking at various kinds of recursion. Now recursion is usually something that is completely new uh, it is a new way of thinking about problems that might sound unfamiliar at first but eventually it is a more natural way of solving problems than other techniques. So we will carefully examine what recursion means uh, and it is so this is the video of um, a media player having itself inside uh, yeah having a copy of itself, itself inside the video and it goes on forever and we will see what uh, does this have to do with recursion. So recursion uh, in English means roughly say again um, and functions defined in terms of itself are called recursive functions. Now this is not completely accurate uh, we want to say that uh, functions in defined in terms of itself in a particular way these are valid recursions. Uh, recursion is a powerful tool for program construction and for thinking about and reasoning about functions in general. So it is a general purpose technique of programming and you can do any kind of program using only just recursion. We will not see such general types of recursion in this uh, course but we will see fairly common examples of recursions. Okay. So for example let us consider a very simple uh, function which will search for a key within a given array okay. and uh, we know how to write this what I will do is I will take an integer initialize it to 0 for i equal to 0 to n, n is the size of the array I will increment i and if at any i I find the key. I will return mine I will return 1 indicating that I have found the key. If I have not found the key and I have reached the end of the array I will return minus 1. This is a typical way to search for a key inside a given array. Now we will approach the idea of recursion by looking at a recursive solution to this. Hopefully while seeing this program we will get an idea of what recursion means. Okay. So what do we mean by a recursive solution to this right rather than defining it and describing abstract properties of recursion why not let us uh, write an actual program which is defined in a recursive manner and through these kind of examples we will eventually get the hang of recursion. So we have to write a function search it will return uh, whether it is found whether a key is found or not if the key is found it returns a 1 if the key is not found it returns a minus 1 and you have to search an array A of size n for the key. Now we have written this function just now using loops now let us write this using recursion. Now what do we mean by solving it in recursive recursive manner we have to think of the function search in ter terms of the same function applied to a smaller instance of the problem. So we have to solve the problem of searching for a key in an array of size n. Can we think of this in terms of solving the sub problem for a smaller array? Okay. This is the basic question that you have to ask when you want to design a recursive function. So let us try to in uh, very abstract terms think of how to solve this in recursive in a recursive manner. So let us say that I will uh, in some unspecified syntax okay this is not going to be valid C but this is just so that we see the idea in a very clear manner. I have to search for an array of size A of, of size n for key. Now if the array is empty that is n is equal to 0 you can have more conditions here n can be less than 0 as well but let us say that empty array is n is equal to 0 then you say that 
I have not found the key because it is an empty array. So, you give back the value minus 1. So, n equal to 0 implies the value to be returned is minus 1 that is what this notation is supposed to stand for. Suppose n is not 0. So, this means that the array is non empty. Now, how do we solve this recursively right. So, we look for the first element whether it is the key or not. If the first element is the key we do not have to do anything further we know that the key is present in the array. So, you return 1. So, the key has been found and you return 1 and now is the big step for recursion. How can we search for the uh, uh, key in an array of size smaller than n ok. So, if a 0 is not equal to key then this means that key can be somewhere in a 1 through a n minus 1 or it is not absent in the array. In any case what we now have to do is search for the array starting at a 1 ok by uh, ok. So, by a 1 this is not strictly c notation what I mean is the sub array starting at a plus 1 ok. So, search in the sub array starting at a plus 1. Now, the sub array has one element uh, less because we are we already know if we are here that a 0 is not equal to key. So, there are only n minus 1 elements in the smaller sub problem and what do we have to search for we have to search for the key ok. So, this says that either the key is present as the first element of the array or you have to solve the sub problem of searching in the sub array for of size n minus 1 for the same key ok. So, here is the key to thinking about a problem in recursive terms. What you first do is the consider the case when uh, you have the trivial array which is the empty array in this case. So, we have the base case and then these are the recursive case ok. So, the recursive case consists of doing something uh, at size n. So, in this case it is search whether the first element is the key or not. If it is true then we do not have to do anything further we have found the key otherwise solve the sub problem. Now, the sub problem is an a smaller copy of the old problem. So, this is what is known as the inductive case or the recursive case. Okay. And the reason I am calling it as inductive case is that recursion has very uh, tight connections to the idea of mathematical induction. If you know how to write a proof by mathematical induction what you normally do is you consider uh, a base case. So, you have a theorem and you want to prove this by mathematical induction you consider the base case probably n equal to 1 or n equal to 0 these will be the base cases for uh, an assertion about natural numbers. And then if the base case is true then you say that I assume that the problem is true for uh, size n and now I want to assume uh, I want to prove that the problem the theorem is true for size n plus 1 ok. This is how a mathematical induction proof looks like and in the case of a recursive program there is a very tight analogy. Uh, recursion in fact is just mathematical induction in the context of writing programs ok. We have to solve a problem first we will see what is the problem in the base case and the base case is a very trivial case usually, but it is important that you think about the base case. Uh, you say that if the array is empty then I will return minus 1 because the key cannot be in the array. Then you say that uh, I will now define the problem of size n in terms of a sub problem of size n minus 1 for example ok. So, we will solve the same uh, we will solve the bigger problem in terms of a smaller copy of itself and this is the key to thinking about recursive programs. let us code this in C. So, we code this in a very straightforward manner 
I will write uh, int search int a uh, int n which is the size of the array a int key which is uh, the key we are searching for if n equal to 0 then return minus 1 because the key is not found this is the base case and if uh, otherwise n is greater than 0. So, you can search for a equal to uh, a 0 is equal to key or not. Okay. So, you can search for whether the first element is the key if it is then you have found the key otherwise what you do is you call search a plus 1 which is the subarray starting at size 1 the subarray has size n minus 1 and key. Okay. Uh, so, in when you search for when you write a recursive program there are a few things that you want to check the first is that the base case is properly handled. The second is that when you define the sub problem you want to ensure that it really is a sub problem okay. because if you solve the problem in terms of uh, an equal size problem or even a bigger size problem your program may not terminate. We will see this in a moment. So, this part which is highlighted in green uh, which is calling search itself, but on a smaller sub problem this is a plus 1 n minus 1 this is what is known as a recursive call to the same function. So, we have seen functions that can call other functions now we are seeing functions which can call themselves and this is what is known as recursion. Let us see how this function behaves ok. Now, before we go into the uh, execution trace of uh, this function I want to add a word of caution the actual way to understand recursion is not to think about the st stack and how functions are calling other functions ok. The real way to understand recursion is to think about this program as uh, a problem defined in terms of sub, sub instance, but in any case we will just see the execution of this function through through the stack trace just to get comfortable with what happens at the back of all of this. So, let us do a quick trace suppose we have an array 31 4 10 35 59 it is an array of size 5 named a and we are searching for the key 3. Now, we know that this key is not present in the array, but let us see how the function executes. So, first we call search a 5 3 a 0 is 31 which is not the key. So, it calls search a plus 1 4 because now we are searching in the sub array of size 4 for the same key ok. So, that is in effect the same as calling the same search function on this sub array highlighted in grey. This is because the answer to search in the whole array is now the same as answer to the search in the sub array that is what re the recursive statement is. Now, a plus 1 of 0 is 4 this is the first element of the sub array now 4, 4 is not 3 ok and at this point you call the sub sub problem which is search a plus 2 the sub array of size 3 for the key 3. Here is the sub array of size 3 and you are searching for uh, 3 in this sub array. Again the first element of the array is 10 which is not 3. So, you call the sub problem of this which is a plus 3 now the array is of size 2 and you will search for 3 ok and this goes on until you find that uh, you have exhausted the array and uh, finally, the array is of size 0. and you will finally, say that since the array is of size 0 I have not found the key. So, you return minus 1. Now, let us just look at this stack of function calls and see how it looks like search a 5 3 is called by main 
and uh, let us say that it has some return address we do not care about it right now. But search a 5 3 calls search a plus 1 4 3 and uh, the place to return is uh, some line in search function. This calls the sub sub problem a plus 2 3 that calls a plus 3 2 that calls a plus 4 1 and that calls a plus 5 0 at which point you realize that their sub problem now is empty and then you return a minus 1. Okay. So, at this point you have reached the base case if n equal to 0 return minus 1. So, that will return a minus 1 where will it return to it will return to the function which immediately called it which is search a plus 4 1 3. So, this guy gets a minus 1 therefore, and it just returns that minus 1 return the value of whatever is returned by the sub problem. Okay. So, it is minus 1 and that minus 1 gets returned. So, it gets bubbled up all the way back to main and main uh, you can realize that the element is not present in the array because the return value of search a 5 3 was minus 1. At this point the the call stack terminates. So, what was special about the recursion call stack it was just that um, most of the stack was involved by a function calling itself over and over, but each time the function called itself it was calling on a smaller version of the problem. And here is how you think about a very simple program in terms of recursion. Earlier we saw how to solve this using iteration which was using a loop and we have seen the problem how to be solved using recursion. Now a word of caution um, we will see this in further examples. It is very important that you handle the base case properly. Now this is something that we are not used to in normal way of thinking. When we think about solving a problem we are thinking about solving substantial sizes of the problems. Um, we are not concerned too much with what happens with an empty array what happens when n is minus 1 and things like that. But even in this pro problem we know that the when we call search a plus 5 0 3 we know that the function terminated because we had a base case which said that if n equal to 0 then return minus 1. If we did not have this case you could see that probably it will go on calling itself infinite number of times. So, just like when you are writing an, uh, a for loop or a while loop you have the case of infinite loops in the case of uh, recursion you can have an infinite recursion and you have to guard against that. The only way to guard against that is to get the base case correct. So, here is something un, uh, um, counter intuitive about uh, programming recursive functions you know almost half of your intellectual effort is in handling the base case properly and only the remaining is in involved in uh, solving the recursive case.